Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the optimized settings for the Quest 2. This is a version 29 update using 120 Hertz with the Oculus Air Link, so no cable attached. Please remember that all settings are different and these settings might not work on yours exactly like mine. You can try and use them as a guide to help you get close and then you just continue experimenting with your own settings. I want to start out by looking at the Quest hardware as well as the Oculus software. You'll need to be running version 29 with the Air Link enabled and switched on, as we'll be using the Air Link throughout the demos. With the new version 29, it's possible to have a refresh rate of 120 Hz, so I've set that. I've turned the render resolution to 1.4 times. I experimented a lot with this, and anything higher wasn't as good performance. So it gives you a render resolution of 4480 by 2256. You'll definitely want to experiment with this to get a good balance for your own system. I'm also using the Oculus Debug tool. You can follow the location path here to find it on your own system. The reason I use this tool is because it enables me to change the bitrate. I changed it here to zero because it improves latency between the Quest 2 and the Air Link. I highly recommend changing this to zero if you have any latency with the system. I don't use the Oculus Tray tool as the newest version of the Oculus app seems to run really well with ASW built in. I'm using driver 466.47, the same one I just upgraded to, and here are my NVIDIA 3D settings. You can see the changes I've made are in bold. You may want to experiment with the last setting, virtual reality pre-rendered frames. I've got mine set to two, but you might want to try one and three. I have game mode turned off. I have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling switched off. Here are my in-game VR settings. I've got most of it set to ultra. However, I do have a render scale of 100 and I've kept to 100 for terrain detail and objects level of detail. So here we are approaching New York City in A32NX. I've got ASW switched on, so it's enabled. And here you can see the frame rates do stay around the low 20 mark, but it actually doesn't matter because you've got so much reprojection happening that it fills in the missing frames. So it feels really, really smooth. It's really good. I'm so impressed with this Quest 2 update, guys. There's no stuttering at all, even at low altitudes. However, there are quite a lot of artifacts, there's quite a lot of wobble and blurring, which I know a lot of people don't like. And if it's too much, obviously it's not comfortable. However, it's a huge improvement in performance. And it's great to see such a smooth experience happening there. The colours look good, it's slightly washed out, but perhaps that's from the sun rays on the right. But generally, it's a very, very good result. A much improved experience using the Quest 2 with ASW switched on. Remember, I've spent time dialing these settings in, so these are my best settings for my setup. In the second video, you can see I'm using the same settings, but with ASW disabled. You can see the FPS counter is slightly higher, and it's very, very smooth again. I'm really impressed with this. I'm actually more impressed with it ASW disabled than enabled because you don't get any of the wobbling artifacts and it's really, really good. So this is actually the best setting I've found so far. A good way to switch off ASW when you're actually flying is just to hold down control and click on number pad one. This disables ASW. You can do this in Oculus Tray Tool as well, but I just use this shortcut as it's easier. As I turn my head, everything looks so smooth and crystal clear. I'm really, really impressed with this headset. And I'm really glad I spent some time dialing in the different settings with ASW switched on and switched off. I've also included some enlarged footage from one of the eyes of the Oculus native view, just so you can see it more clearly. It's slightly pixelated because of the quality, but it just gives you a better idea of what you see or what I see as I was flying over New York City. Really, really impressed. Wow, this is really, really impressive, guys. Well done, Oculus. This is a really, really big step forward. No cables, 120 hertz, 
and these settings are working really well. Here we are in our King Air 360 flying over Argentina. A completely different plane and location. You can see first of all the FPS is much higher since we're in a different plane and different location, less demanding overall. I've got SW switched on, very very smooth, very good colour, really really good clarity. We are getting some artefacts and wobbling but you won't be able to see that due to the 2D translation of what I'm seeing. But it's still really impressive. It's very, very smooth, and it just gives it so much more realism and immersion when it's this smooth. Excellent stuff. Very, very impressive, even with the ASW turned on at this point. And here in the final demonstration, we have the same plane, same location, but we have the ASW disabled. You can see the FPS is higher, mid 30s, and it's so smooth you would not need the ASW here. The reason I say this is because ASW is really only needed for places where, you, where your system really struggles. In high density areas, over cities or with big airliners, you may want to enable ASW, but you just have to work with what suits you and what you're able to put up with. So for example, if you're high altitude out in the wilderness in a small plane, you're going to get much higher frames anyway without any kind of ASW helping you out. ASW is a good thing and I keep going on about it because it makes such a big difference in the actual way you perceive reality within the virtual reality world in terms of frames and movement and to me smoothness and motion are the most important parts of virtual reality flying. I'm really really impressed guys. Wow. Amazing. I feel like it's a game changer for this headset to be honest. And here's the enlarged footage, so you can get some real sense of immersion and how it feels uh, to be in this cockpit at this time with this experience. Here's an example of how ASW affects motion. On the right hand side you can see the propeller looks more smooth than on the left. This is really dependent on where you're flying and what you're looking at, but generally ASW on gets rid of any kind of stutter. After experimenting with lots of different settings, I'm really pleased to show you my optimized settings for my own system. I'm really, really impressed with the Quest 2 headset after this update. The headset seems to function a lot better. No need to do constant resets like I used to. I really, really think this bumps that Quest 2 right up there. In my opinion, this is a very good thing for the headset, and I think it's a really viable choice of headsets. Again, guys, since the update, I'm really, really impressed with this headset, and I thoroughly recommend you get it if you're looking for a good, reliable headset. Wow, what a game changer for this. I hope these settings really help you dial in your own systems. I understand I've got a high-end system, but these should try and get you on the right track. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. I'm looking forward to making more content soon. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.